Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Um, I wanted to share with you some of the scriptures I got today in prayer. So, anyhow, um, I've been getting you know, either in prayer or early in the morning or dreams. So, here they are. Um, and I'm going to kind of briefly talk about them, but really I'm just getting them out there. Um, it was out of Acts 3, but what the Lord highlighted, well, Acts 3 is really good. You need to read the whole story, but Acts 3, 4 through 12. So, here we go. And fixing his eyes on him was John. With John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk and behold him. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging on at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, as James, as, as the lame man who was healed, held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look intentionally at us as though by our own power or power? godliness we had made this man walk then the other one that he highlighted was titus three four and five and six really all three is good but again get to it but when the kindness of and love of god our savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to the mercy, he, to his mercy, he saved us through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So really, we all have a purpose, but it's not about us. It's about Jesus. But it is about us, not about me, because the Lord dealt with me that it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. You took me to Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and my people are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. You know, we got all this stuff that we try to build and look at this, look at what I'm doing for God, and a bunch of nonsense. Really, we're just as vessels, but we do have a purpose. And a, and a reason and a season, but read Matthew 20. Kind of breaks down all the equality. You can be the doorkeeper or the senior pastor. God has a purpose for you. You can be a stay-at-home mom. God has a purpose for you, for all of us. But it's just time for us to be those willing, yielded vessels and cut through all the crap that just we try to place emphasis on. First part about it, it kind of talks about the silver and gold, you know, because the whole cultural America and the, and the church in general is stuck on money and power and prestige. And, you know, if you got a bunch of money and a bunch of people, that's a move of God. Okay? I was watching one video this morning about some preacher that spent $20,000 on some stupid dresser with a marble table and 14,000 on lamps and this and that and the list went on and on and on. It was like, you know, it was like kind of a drone. I really didn't feel like hearing that. But it's like, that's stupidity. Just sheer stupidity. Waste of God's resources. I get it. We need money. My wife and I, the Lord dealt with me in prayer to go to some little podunk town in Pennsylvania, 2,000 miles away. Well, I'd have a car. I'd have paid for gas. I'd have paid for a hotel. I understand. We need resources. But it's time to 
be in the spirit. What's God showing you? It may be with money. It may not be with money. But, you know, we can't put our emphasis on that, on the silver and gold. Second part of that is he wants to change our mind. wasn't about the healing. It was about changing that man's mind, his mindset, his, his faith, his hope. Go, get up. <clears throat> There's so many hurting people out there, guys, in this world, in this world. And, you know, the, this battle's going to be won in the streets, not in some fancy coliseums, you know. The Lord dealt with me about that, you know, what the church is trying to do and go and be and stuff. Bigger and better and more people and bigger bands and coliseums and filling up this and filling up that and look what a wonderful work I've done for God. He told me, he said, they're trying to build the stuff, serfs, terse, and kingdoms that aren't of him. And I'm trying to empty out the jailhouses and the hospitals and the mental institutions and the homeless shelters and getting down into the nitty gritty where people actually live and changing lives. May not be seen, guys. Sorry. I know that's not the warm, fuzzy feeling that we all want to get and the accolades and the look what I did for God. Really? You didn't do squat. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not I can do all things. <clears throat> so Um, then he was praising God and then the latter part talks about what I'm just saying they're like don't look at us Peter said saw it. he responded to the people men of Israel why do you marvel at this or why look so intently at us as though by our own power and godliness we had made this man walk it's time for the church to portray Jesus look at my message on how God sees abortion in America yeah, we could slap a label on these people. You know, I'm just going to call it like it is. It, You know, it is taking a life. It's not a choice. We don't have the right to make that choice. The choice needs to be Jesus. We need to interject Jesus into these people, man and woman. Go after both of them. We may not get them all. We don't have to break the law to do it. We just need to interject quick. Bane debates and calling people, slapping labels on people. It's time for the church to get up and do something about it. Heard of one church here in Dallas, 37,000 members. I'm not going to name it. Like, man, if everybody there gave $10 once a year and actually got into the dirt where these people live because a lot of them are making this choice. These women are making this choice because of the economics of it. They don't want to be broke. They don't want, they want to finish school. They know that they're probably going to have a life of poverty. Their parents may have abandoned them over this choice. You know, it was created out of sin. The pleasures of sex out of wedlock, most likely. Probably a lot of it. And then they want to just dispose of the choice and wash it away and make another sin, create another sin to just do away with it. Time to renew their mind, guys. That's what Titus is talking about. The washing of the water of the word. Let's go to Titus. He saved us through the washing and regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, which whom he poured out abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. He was dealing with me about that, too. You know, we're looking for revival. We're looking for moves of God. Because it's a lot of gloating and self-motivated stuff. Look at me. Look at who I am. Look at what a big band I got. Like, a lot of them, I am watching YouTube, it's like, Man, I, when I was a kid, I went to a lot of rock concerts, drugs and rock concerts. Drug, sex, and rock and roll was the thing, you know? And a lot of them don't even look any different than that to me. Sorry. And I'm a big fan of worship because I've got a lot of stuff that God's done for me in worship, and I believe in that. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm not throwing everybody under the bus on that. But what I'm saying is a lot of it is twisted up into just stuff for, for us. So we can look good. That was the other piece that he's dealing with me about, about his glory. We're his glory. But he doesn't want any man to glory. But we're his glory when Jesus lives in us because Jesus was his glory. 
But what did it also say, which is an awesome scripture, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God. Awesome, great, powerful. Yay. Dive through the mountains, through the fiery trials. Everything's great and awesome and good, and it is. What about the rest of it? Took on the form of a servant, obedient even unto death. What's God telling you to do, guys? It's time to be obedient, be those vessels. Quit trying to be something we're not. Portray stuff. But yet at the same time, we're kings and royal priests. That was Jesus, God, an ultimate check in power. He's on the cross, dying for our sins, our messy lives, trading his pure, clean life, the Son of God, for our crap, taking it on. You ever hear him say, do you know who I am? He did. He was the Son of God. He could have called out to angels from heaven, could have stopped it at any time, could have walked away from it. But he didn't. So what's God showing you? What's your purpose? You know, just be in that flow. Be that vessel. Open up to the, you know, that's the other one of the other messages. Who's your source? It should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and the Word. If you get it from somewhere else, it's probably a pile of crap or some interpretation or opinion or, you know, look at the Internet. It's full of it. Look at the news. It's full of it. News is full of the worldly, twisted up stuff. Not just the news, but I mean, it's like, man, the politics, it was like everybody's trying to get dirt on everybody who does not, you know, last election wasn't really even so much about who was the better candidate, it's about who was the least dirtiest. Slime and scrap. Sorry, guys, but, you know, but, but Jesus didn't want us to look at that, but I'm just saying it's out there, but it's kind of a distraction. He wants us to look at the cross, at him. So anyhow... You know, the other thing he was dealing with me about is about Psalms 29. The voice of the Lord is as thunder, but he was saying how were his voice. And the, the church world, the world and the church world has tried to squash that. We're his voice. You guys are his voice. Portray it. Do it. Be it. What's God showing you? It may look a little different than me, but we're still the body. It's kind of like. If I go to walk somewhere and I'm walking, my eyes need to see where I'm going, of course, so I don't stumble. But I need my big tussle because that helps my balance. I need my legs to move, the nerves in my brain to tell my legs to move so I can move. You know, it's all connected. A part of, is any one part better than the other? I need them all. God needs our whole, the whole body. So yours may look a little different, but it's not necessarily different. It's part of the body. So we got to kind of be really careful and cautious and pray about it when we look at others and realize it, you know, in the spirit, look at it in the spirit. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Look at your brothers and sisters in the spirit and not in the flesh. So anyhow, um, tune in to some of my other messages, comments. You want to email me directly at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. I have one message out there about writing a second book that's coming out in February. You can email me your address. I'll send you a free copy. It's going to be called Jesus Christ and You, the Hope of Glory. Many, many, many scriptures about how we're his glory. It's a lot deeper than that. It's not about me. I'm just a vessel. I'm just directional. Like I said, who's your source? Nothing to do with me. I'm just getting you to him. Got another book out about visions. He deals with me visions and dreams. And it's like, man, God. Okay. But I don't know. What's he dealing with you about? How's he, you know, what's he talking to you about? It's time that the church stood up and be, been heard. It's, it, you know. We need to be the voice of the unborn, all those children that are actually being murdered, you know, and it is murder. I'm sorry, but it is. But we can't just slap a label on these on these people and just throw them to the to the trash pile with, like they're doing with their babies. 
We may only be able to reach some of them. Target them. Time for the church to get up off their butt and quit trying to build a big, cost, big fancy cathedral type church. Millions of dollars of, of facilities. For what? I want to have a nice chair to sit in. I want an air conditioned and heated, of course, especially heat, air conditioned in Texas. It's hot. Of course. But the extravagance of it is wasteful. What are we doing to reach people right where they live? Hospitals are full of people dying, about to step into eternity. What are we doing, guys? And I'm not the finger point guy. It's on me, too. I'm not just, you know, I got to do stuff, too. I got to get out there, too. My wife and I minister at the homeless shelter every Sunday night. And it's like, I've been there for three years. And last Christmas, it was like, couldn't even get in the parking lot. There was 200, 300 people. I was like, but where are they all year long? One little holiday, Christmas, great, awesome. Did your noble deed for the for the year. Give you a warm, fuzzy feeling. Bull crap, guys, it's time to get past all that. You may not even be seen. But it's not about us, guys. It's about what he wants, what he wants. What Jesus wants. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto God except through me. You know, we all want to go to God in our own little formula, formulated ways and avoid or not go or not follow God's plan, which was Jesus. That's another part of my main theme. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just at that point where it's like, I'm just going to get it out there. Guys, I'm not trying to be, I'm not running for president. I'm not trying to be liked or not liked. I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I got to do what God tells me to do. And so do you. What's he telling you to do? Do that. Be obedient. I'm at, you know, it's where I'm at right now. I'm at the obedience piece. I'm at one of my most favorite of scriptures is Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. This gets us in a lot of trouble, guys. His brain and it's all the stuff going on and thinking and being and doing and stuff. This doesn't get us in trouble. When we go to it with a pure heart. You may have something going on with a brother or sister in the Lord. Somebody might have said something. Somebody might have really wronged you. And you maybe even have a righteous stance on that. Maybe they really did. But it's your choice to pick that up as an offense. Or pray for them. Really pray for them. Not God open their eyes to see. A lot of that's just see it how I see it. How does Jesus see it? Take the low side. Humble side. Me, come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden. You know, so anyhow, you know, that's kind of where I'm at, guys. It's just, I'm just going to keep getting it out there. What God's showing me, teaching me, telling me to say. I'm just going to do it. And that's what I'm telling you guys. Just do it. Be like Larry the Cable Guy. Just get her done. I'd like Nike commercial. Just do it. As long as it's Holy Spirit led, you can't go wrong. We're his vessels, guys. We're his glory. It's time for us to rise and shine. And quit letting the circumstances and world and stuff all around us Pin us down, hold us down, hold us back, hinder us. You know, so anyhow, um, we love you guys. We really do. Um, hope you have a great day. So I'll see you soon. Great and awesome day in the Lord.